Hello, my name is Tracy, VE3TWM, and the intent of this video is to give some information with regard to the use of telescopic fiberglass poles as masts for HF wire antennas. I'm a big fan of HF portable operation, uh, and one thing I've done over the years is spent too much time trying to get wires up in the air to a point where they'll actually put out a decent signal. Um, as a result of this, I put some research into alternate ways of getting my antenna up and one of the things that I came across that I'm really happy about is telescopic fiberglass poles. Now what I'm holding in my hand is actually a 31 foot telescopic pole. As you can see it compacts down to about four feet, very easily transportable. Um, what I like about these poles is that number one they are not metal, so they will not adversely affect the wire antenna that comes close to them. Anybody who's worked with metal and wire antennas will know you have to keep them to separate or you will experience really bad effects and you're going to have a lot of issues. Um, what this means for these poles is that you can actually run the wire along part of the mast if need be, or as in the case of the one behind me, I've actually got an inverted L for 40 meters running down 31 feet and then running across 31 feet to my house. Um, that's a really key feature of these. Another one that I like is the fact that these are durable. I've had one in my backyard set up for several years through multiple Canadian winters, blizzards, high winds, um, freezing rain, no issues. Uh, these are really finely suited towards uh, applications where it would appear that they might be a bit too fragile. Uh, I have seen some complaints on the net from amateurs complaining that these are in fact fragile and they break easily. Well let me tell you that here's when they will break. The tips of these are narrow and they do flex in the wind. Personally I think that's a really good thing. Flexing in the wind means that the mast will take some of the pressure off of the wire antenna if installed correctly. But these tips are not designed to hold the weight of the center uh, feed of a dipole or an off-center fed antenna and the coax. This is where I think amateurs are running into issues. They're putting all the weight on top and sure enough the mast will flex and cause one of the sections to break. So you got to be a little bit smart about it. What I use are end fed antennas Here's an example of one right here, and I will take the coax, run it part way up the pole, fasten it on the pole, and then take the initial part of the wire, run it up to the tip of the pole, and then the remainder of the antenna out, either towards another one of these poles, or as a sloper to a ground stake. Uh, works very, very well for me. Uh, the other, probably the last thing I want to talk about with these antennas is the price. I think they're reasonable for what they give you. They're about $70 US for a 31 foot model. And personally, I've, I've tried the 20 foots and the 28 foots. I think 31 is probably the sweet spot, uh, the sweet spot for um, the, the height and performance ratio as far as dollars go. Uh, that's what I would recommend. Uh, but certainly you can go bigger if you want. You're just going to increase the amount of time it takes to install. Uh, maybe one last note about these is that they're easy to deploy. A bungee cord will allow them to be strapped to a fence or other object. Uh, you can even get ground stakes for them, which make deployment very simple in an area where there's nothing to strap them to. I hope this has encouraged some folks to get out there and, and, and try to play around with these and get on the HF Portable. It's a lot of fun. And, and I honestly look forward to speaking with some of you on the air. Thanks for watching. This is VE3TWM of